I've driven all the way to High Wycombe in Buckinghamshire to come and look at a roof. That roof behind me, it's just a roof on a building. It's still being built, it's got scaffolding, it's a building site. So that's a roof. This is a mug standing on another roof and this is fully charged. When I look at that roof, Chris, it's just a roof. It, you know, it's like I've come all this way and all I'm looking at is a building site with a roof. It doesn't look that special. So what is special about that roof? What's special about that roof is the point you're making. It's invisible solar. As an industry, the solar industry is used to putting big sheets of glass on roofs yeah. that are either in your face or dynamic loading the roof. This is an invisible solar. It adds to the aesthetics of the building um, it increases the performance of the building without any detriments in terms of aesthetics. Right. In 2011, when the industry was going mad for solar products, uh, a Derby engineer looked at what we were doing, which was putting a roof on a building and then bolting <laughs> modules above of the it. roof. Yeah. So he, he researched what's the world's most popular roof tile. And it's very simple. It's a 10 to the square meter, large flat slab of concrete. Right. So. He designed a solar module that was exactly the same size. So as all we do is we drill a hole in it for the connections and we bolt on an ETFE mineral polymer cell. Right. This is a 15 watt cell with connectors on the back, which are male and female connectors, right. the same as you see on your fields full of solar when yeah, you're driving yeah. around. And, and you, you end, end up, up with that. that. Wow. So as you say, this one's come straight off the building. So there's the connectors in the rear. So we connect male and female across the roof, exactly the same as everybody right. else. And then you tile it in as a roof tile. So that, and that, the reason there's a gap at the top is because that's where the, the next tile goes over it. So yes, you've the got next that. tile sits here. Right. So this, this is the, the overlock that makes it watertight. Yeah, I'm assuming those tiles are produced in their tens of millions. They're relatively cheap, the actual uh, concrete tile. Yes, that's right. I mean, the beauty about the concept of this is we can ship very, very lightweight modules around the world and then we buy we buy the concrete in the country where right. we're going to install. Right. So, so you don't have to make those here and then put them on a truck and then on a no, ship? No. Because that's heavy. Each one weighs four and a half kilos. Right. So we're saving four and a half kilos in shipping yeah. just to uh, ship modules right. and then assemble around the world. Clients are coming to us now that are building their, their own individual house. Yeah. So it's all about self-build. And they have existing solar with the feeding tariff. Yeah. And they, you know, they've had their 55 pence a unit I generating. Know. God, I haven't got that. that we have from 2011. <laughs> yeah. But now they're coming to build their own property. It's, we like the benefits of solar. You know, we're not so much worried about not getting a feeding tariff anymore. Yeah but we don't like the aesthetics of it. Yes. So if we're going to do a forever property with our own money, we're going to put the most aesthetic solar product on it, yeah. rather than just in the feeding tariff race, it was almost the cheapest four kilowatt system right. everyone bought. Now it's, I want the most aesthetic yeah. four kilowatt system, yeah. five kilowatt, six kilowatt system, yeah. and a battery, yeah. and you know, and a packed ground source heat pump, air source heat pumps, yes. and you know, the whole renewable package right is all it, which makes together. so much more sense if you're building from scratch i mean now it really does it yes. makes a huge you know retrofitting that is expensive and painful yes it is but building it in is much much easier isn't it although our existing housing stock that the councils and housing associations own uh, they have a 30 to 40 year re-roofing right. scheme right okay so while you're re-roofing you know, we're, yeah, we're doing all these housing upgrades with insulation and windows and kitchens and bathrooms when you do roofing, why wouldn't you put solar roofing on the whole roof? Yes, if you're going to do it anyway. Yes. Yeah, if you're putting up the scaffolding, for goodness sake, put some solar yes. tiles on it. Yes. Yeah. So here's the thing that I'm confused about. So when I had my roof that's got tiles on and then a big little framework that's put on top of that yep. and then solar panels put on that and then they wire them all together 
it's still actually only 16 panels they had to wire together, whereas you've got here literally hundreds of tiles that you're yes. wiring together. But do, you don't need extra wiring that's in the roof. Does it, do they just plug into each other and then at the end it all plugs into one they thing? They plug into each other in series. Right. And once we've got 45 tiles together in series, we connect them in parallel so we get a high voltage system going into the roof with only right. two wires per elevation. Right. So on the roof That's behind what I was us, going to say, is there are massive yeah, wires going right. up to that elevation? We, we've no. got three elevations, so we have six cables going into the building. Right. Because it's a low hampage, high voltage system. Right. So it works on much, much higher voltage solar than your glass modules right. do. So we get very, very early start up. We get very late finish because we've got a bigger operating voltage. Right. So uh, we need to start the inverters at above 300 volts. So okay. by having okay, a high right. voltage system, it, it means we're in that 300 plus right. sweet spot for longer in the day. For longer in the day. So in this particular instance, are these? Is there a battery in this building, or is this just a feed into? This there? is just a feed in on this right. one. Um, for the same client, we've done a project in West Sussex, which is 4.8 uh, kilowatt hours of batteries as well. Right. So the, you know, it's a technology they've already used. Yeah. On that one, because it's a chiropractic uh, surgery. Right. They wanted the battery storage for evenings. Whereas on here, the, the, it was more a planning led. Yeah. Uh, they, they needed renewable options. So this is a, a direct with no batteries. Right. But then, but then you told me you were telling me about a, a, a like a big apartment building in London that was going to have that was having batteries and and roof tiles. Is that Very right? much so. Yeah. yeah. That that one in London will actually have a community battery for the whole apartment block. So they will actually design it so every flat can use the power from the batteries. Right. Even though. Some of them are on ground floor. It's a seven-storey block. Right. And they share the, what's on the roof throughout the 167 throughout the whole, apartments. It's just so obvious, isn't it? I think. I mean, do you know what your total capacity is on that on this on building? On this building behind yeah. us, yeah, we put 900 tiles on this building. That's right. 13 and a half kilowatts. Right. Which is chunky. The industry from 2011 to 2016 was putting 16 250-watt modules yeah. on. That was, that was four kilowatts. Yeah. Um, because that hit the 3.68 kilowatt maximum. Yes. For, for the, the grid could cope with. Yeah. So that's why everyone's got 16 panels. Yeah. Whereas with this, with it being eight flats and a landlord yes. supply, we've got a much bigger building, a much right. higher uh, electrical demand, yeah. which is why we've got 13 and a half kilowatts on. My argument about new buildings. I mean, they should all be using these tiles, shouldn't they? Every, all over the country, there's new buildings going on. Yes. There's now, you know, and I think at least put solar panels on them, which they don't, but at least put these tiles on. So there's the, so the argument then is, what is the extra cost? If that was just the the cement tiles as they are around the edge with no solar on, yes. What, what's the cost differential to do this? A standard concrete roof tile that you're looking at is a pound, ten pound a square meter. Right. A solar tile is about thirty pounds each. Ah, the, the actual individual yes. unit is thirty pounds. Yes. Wow. Okay. But when we, if we go back to your sixteen panels, your five kilowatt system. Yeah. Um, a five kilowatt system today is around about seven and a half, eight thousand pounds. Right. A five kilowatt roof would be about eleven to twelve thousand pounds. It's about right. a fifty fifty percent premium. Right. But you have a roof. You don't have a roof and then something on top, on of, top it, of it. On top of it. Yeah. And you don't have the associated engineering problems yeah. of having two two. So, I mean, it's going to be cheaper to install in terms of construction man hours or however you measure that you know yes because you're just putting tiles on but also you haven't got to worry about the engineering of having the increased load over the roof right yes because solar panels act as a dynamic as a dead load with the extra weight yeah. on the roof but because they have a, a an airflow below them they act as a dynamic load as yeah. well which we roofs were rarely designed for yeah it does take a bit longer for them to put those tiles on I mean, it does bit, yeah because there's fiddling. an extra operation yeah you know the the, the tiles have the connector snapped on on site, right? And then when she, when she's laying it on the roof, you've then got to connect yeah. each cell as you go. Yeah. So there is an extra. It's not connection. that big a deal. No, no, it's not. No. No, I, a roof behind us. I think it took the lads about an extra hour per elevation. Okay. Yeah. So, that's not very long. No, yeah. it's not very yeah. long. Yeah. No. And then in terms of because a lot of our viewers will be aware of the you know with huge amounts of publicity the Tesla tiles. Is that essentially the same technology they're using, or is that something different there? Because we haven't seen a Tesla tile in this country right. yet. Yeah, we don't. Um, know. We don't really know. My, yeah. my colleagues in, in North America um, 
find the Tesla product is a toughened glass module right. with a hologram on the back which collects the solar. So when you come to the balance of the roof, as you rightly pointed out behind us, the balance of the roof is standard concrete roof tiles at yeah. a pound each. For a Tesla roof, the balance of the roof tiles have to be non-solar Tesla roof tiles. Which is so sort of these, so these are the tiles that you don't that aren't Tesla yes. where they, where they can't fit them, so they've got to do something yeah. else. The other issue that we think is coming is the roof behind us has got hips on it, yeah. and and on the other side it's got a roof window. Every image we've seen for a Tesla roof is a perfect mono pitch flat, rectangle, flat rectangle, yeah, because which is quite common in American buildings. But you can't cut toughened glass. No. So on this roof, all of the diagonals are all cut tiles. Yes. Where with Tesla you can't cut a glass. Right. Right. So we think you know it's going to be a nice product to see when it gets here. Yeah. But we don't think it can do English vernacular roofs in right. the way that we're right. used to. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you when people start to see this stuff and, and you know, it is beginning to change the building industry, it is beginning to say that we could do this and it does make a difference. I mean, a, 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 a thousand developments like this in the country would make a, you know, a measurable difference. The, the national grid engineers would see that. Very much so. At the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, having supplied roof tiles for 25 years now, you know, we see this as a, as a no-brainer product. Yeah. You've got to put a roof on a building. Why not solarise your roof? Yeah. So that roof is amazing. And then I stand up on this roof, which has no solar on it, of course, and I look at all the roofs around here, just the houses, the industrial units. There is one industrial unit there that's got solar on it, one. And you do see it occasionally. You're seeing it more now and they're, OK, OK, I'm going to be generous. There are companies, big companies who have got big box warehouses that are finally, in 2020, putting a bit of solar on the roof. But loads of them haven't. But this is great. So I'm really glad we came to see this. I want to thank Chris for, for showing us and allowing us to come and have a look at what he's doing here. This is brilliant. We're going to be looking at more solar roofing things in the near future. The only reason we could come here today was because of the wonderful support of our Patreon supporters who allow us to make this series. So please do have a look at the Patreon link if you are feeling in any way fractionally micro generous. We'd be hugely uh, grateful for that. Also uh, YouTube memberships growing fast and we're coming up with some coming up with some ploys to encourage you into YouTube membership. You don't even need to leave this page. You can do it all here. Makes it easy. Uh, other than that, please subscribe to Fully Charged. But most important, forget all that. If you're not interested in any of that, that's fine. Just watch Fully Charged as we produce more and more fabulous content about electric vehicles, the future of energy and transportation in the 21st century. Love it. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.